If you have an original Xbox One and your power supply has gone bad, then this is probably the fix for you. It's better than buying the $60 replacement from Microsoft that you have to jump through hoops to get. It's better than buying a cheap knockoff from Amazon that's going to make a bunch of noise and then go bad within a few weeks anyways. Uh, and it's less expensive than either of those options. You can do it with some inexpensive tools and uh, inexpensive parts. And it's really not that bad. I'll walk you through the whole process. So keep watching. I have a real fix here for the orange light to dead power brick. So if you're uh, if the power brick or power supply for your X, original Xbox One, uh, so not an Xbox One S or One X, but or the Xbox One original console um, has this external power brick. If uh, yours has uh, done the behavior where you plug it into the wall and it turn the the power light on the side of it over here turns orange and then you plug it into the console um, with this end here and it goes dead, so the power light over here goes off, then this is the fix for you. This is uh, um, what's going on with your power brick. This is the actual fix, plugging it in and off, in and out several times and stuff. You're welcome to play with that. There's other YouTubers that are saying that that has some, done something for them, but that's not a real fix. Uh, this is this is what's actually gone wrong. Inside of your Xbox, you have these capacitors that are um, they act as filters for the inlet power source. And if you look at the top of these right here, I've already taken them out, but I'm going to show you how. So can you see how they're slightly domed right there? That is an indicator that those capacitors have gone bad. So I'm going to replace those capacitors. Um, and it's really not too hard. This is the new capacitor I'm going to replace it with. You notice how the capacitor top is nice and flat. That's that's an indicator that the capacitor uh, hasn't gone bad. So um, there's these three capacitors inside. I'm going to replace them with the three new ones. It's uh, just a cost of a couple of dollars. I'll put a link in the uh, comments below for where you can buy those capacitors. Again, I bought a pack of 10 of these for, I think, $6 off of Amazon. Um, you will need just a couple of tools and a little bit of know-how, but nothing really too bad. One thing you will need to get the box open is you will need a Torx, a modified Torx bit. This is a T10 Torx bit, but it's got uh, it's a modified one where it has the that pin removed in the middle or the or the dimple that you can see you can see right there. Um, I'll show you that in a second. And you'll need a soldering iron and basic soldering skills. I don't have. Uh, a ton of soldering experience, but it's really not bad. If you're a little bit handy, you're, you're going to be able to fix this yourself or get um, an adult or, uh, or somebody with a little bit of um, experience uh, to do it for you. And it's a pretty simple, quick fix. So here we go. First thing you're going to do, take your power brick, flip it over. Uh, on the under, I've already pulled mine apart here, but I'll show you. On the other side here, in each of the corners, you'll have uh, these... First thing you'll see these little uh, rubber stops on the end. Just put a, a, uh, a flathead screwdriver or something like that underneath the edge of it. Pry it off. They just they pop right off. They're just little little clips on the ends. Um, and then on, underneath each of those, you're going to have uh, um, these these Torx screws, right? So Torx head with a dimple in the middle. And if we can get it to focus there, and it's kind of hard to see. A normal T10 Torx will not fit in here. Um, because of that dimple in the middle. There are other people saying drill it out and all kinds of stuff. Just get the get, get the right tool. I'll put another link on for a tool on Amazon that'll work, but I think, I mean, my little, I've got a little electronics kit here that I think I picked up at Walmart for for like $6 or something. It comes in handy all the time, so just, just grab one of those. Okay, after you got those off, you're gonna remove the cover, which is hard to do one-handed. Inside the cover you will have, initially you'll have this uh, this big shield that is soldered on each end. Um, you'll take your soldering iron and to remove the solder, if you haven't done this before, it's pretty basic. All you do is take the tip, you get let your soldering iron get nice and hot. You stick the tip of it into the solder here for a second until you can see it start to melt. Uh, and then you lift up and it'll pop right off. See that? How easy that was? Um, I already did the other side, which is what made this side easier to pop off. I've already pulled this whole thing apart once, but 
Um, then this side comes out the same way, right? You just, just heat the solder up and apply a little bit of pull to it and it'll pop right out. So we'll get that out of the way, won't need it for a little bit. Then you have your, your, uh, your board down here. And the other side's actually what we care about. So now that we've got that off, I'm gonna flip it back over, remove the, the top cover here. And you'll have one clip right here that in this housing here is just a fan. That's all it is. One little clip down here. See if I can do it one-handed. Nope. Hold on. Needed two hands for that part. But just, uh, anyways, pop that clip off. Comes out of there. Um, and then when you pull yours apart, you will see um, something that looks like this, except these three circles right here will not be empty. Your you will have three capacitors sitting in here like this in this tri pattern right here. Those are the three that are likely bad. Um, inspect them, so just pull them up and look at them. Like I said, if the top of them, see how the top is just slightly domed. You can't see a lot, but they're slightly rounded on the top. They've got this, this X on the top of them that makes it a little bit easier to see, and the top is slightly domed. So uh, anyways, that means that they're bad. So if those three right there have the dome top to them and not a nice flat top like this or like any of the other capacitors in here, like there's one over here, it's a nice flat top. Those are all good, uh, or at least they're probably good. I mean, I, there's, other, there's real ways to test, but that's, that's your quick indicator that you're going to be able to do without any tools. Okay, so assuming that those are bad, all you're going to do is flip your board over here, take your soldering iron, and locate. You'll, each of them has two pinholes. You see them here, right here, where I've removed them. Down on the other side here, you can see the solder where they've been removed. You'll have right there's one, right there's one, right here, right here, and then there's two over here, one and two. So each of those, what you'll do is put your soldering iron on them, kind of like we did with the other thing. You really just touch it to the, to the point that you care about, wait for the solder to get a little bit soft, and pull from the other side to remove the, the capacitor, and it will come out. You'll, you'll have to do one side at a time, so you like get one side soft, pull it out, get the other side softer and pull it out, and kind of rock it back and forth. But then they'll, they'll come right out, should look like this. When they come out, a little bit of solder left on the tips of them. And uh, these are 2200 microfaraday 16 volt uh, capacitors. So uh, 10 millimeter by 20 mil millimeter is their size. I said, again, I said I'll put a, um, a link in, in the description, but uh, um, those will fit. They're actually 10 by 25, but uh, I got 10 by 20s to replace them and they'll look, they'll look just the same. Um, oh, don't lose this guy, by the way. That's just your indicator light. I'll show you where that goes when we put it back together. Um, yeah, so uh, now that I've got those out, um, like you've already seen, I'm going to install some new ones. Uh, i got to use both hands to do the soldering, but it's pretty easy, so I'll show you what that's like when it's done. So as you're installing the capacitors, make sure you get the orientation right. Notice that all the capacitors from the manufacturer will have... Um, a, a line down one side. See this white line down this side? The, the white line down this uh, capacitor here. This is the one I pulled out of here. You want to make sure that those are oriented in the same way. And they're marked on the board so you don't get lost. The, the line will mark up what the dark side is indicated by that circle, right? So you see how that's uh, each of these guys, the line here, the white line lines up with that dark marker on the other side. If you forget or get confused, you can just check the indicators of other capacitors on the same board, right? So there's another capacitor and you see it lines up with that black tab there. That's what you're going to want to do over here as well. Okay, I've got my capacitors in here. Just, I haven't soldered them in yet. I just wanted to show you kind of the setup, what they look like. So what you want to do is leave those long. Use the tip of your soldering iron to make that hole uh, or each of the holes just large enough that you can slide those through and then leave them sticking out. And what you're going to do is take your soldering iron and hold it right at the base of each of these for a second to get it nice and warm, get it nice and hot, and then take your solder, which I can't kind of with my other hand right now, take your solder, right, this is your solder, um, just standard gold solder, um, 
and uh, um, and then while it's warm, just dab it right at the base right there. And melt a tiny bit off, and it will hold it in place, make a good solid connection, and then after you've done all of them, you can come back and just clip the tips off. You don't want too much. You just need a tiny bit in each spot to hold it and make electrical contact. That's all it is. You don't. You definitely don't want like big globs that are falling onto other uh, other parts of the board here, right? If you were to cross over and your solder were to get onto another spot, that that might make things a little more complicated, um, or could ruin your board, I guess, if you got unlucky and went in the wrong spot. Um, anyway, so all you got to do now is clip your ends and then just. Put everything back together, the reverse. Oh, you gotta clip your ends. Uh, you're gonna put that uh, that cover back on, right? There you go. This cover back on. After we clip our ends, it goes back on the same way it came off, and you solder those ends back in, right? You really just, you probably don't even need to add any solder. You just heat that solder that's there back up, stick this guy in through the, through the slot there, and uh, let it freeze back up. Um, you might have to add a little bit of solder just to get it to hold, but probably not. Um, and then just reinstall it. Don't forget to, uh, this little guy here is the light indicator. When you put it back together, it should sit just right in the corner of your box. Something like this. Um, yep, just line up the ends of your uh, cable here and your cable on this side with, with the grooves in your housing. And... Uh, Put your screws back in and you should be golden. Um, I'll show you a video of mine working here in just a minute. Okay, as promised, here's the functioning power block with a white indicator on it. Xbox is on and running. It wasn't doing that before. Um, it's the real fix, not some joke one. Um, like you'll see a bunch of people doing with plugging it in and unplugging it a hundred times. Or uh, it's also a lot better than buying a um, cheap knockoff um, power supply from Amazon or whatever because those things will burn out typically within uh, um, I don't know a couple of weeks or something just look at all of the one-star reviews on Amazon for whichever one you're thinking about buying and you'll you'll see that there's even people that say that they've fried their consoles with them or they're super loud and noisy because they've got a ridiculous fan so anyways this is the real fix um, Hopefully it will work for you with just a few basic tools and a little bit of know-how. Good luck.